this is Dr. Trudy and I'm going to be discussing a very important topic in pregnancy. This topic is very important so please pay very close attention. So I'm going to be discussing about cervical sacrilege. Cervical sacrilege. So one of the problems, one of the complications that can happen in pregnancy is pregnancy loss, actually miscarriages. So the cervix is a very important part of the female reproductive system. The cervix plays a very important role in pregnancy. The state of the cervix must be very, very good for pregnancy to be carried to term. In some women, for some reasons, their cervix might not be competent. When a cervix is not competent, it means it cannot carry that pregnancy going on in the body to term, to the time the baby is supposed to be delivered. So in this group of women, in order to give the pregnancy a chance to be carried to the time the baby is going to be born, this surgical procedure called cervical sacrilege will be used to secure the cervix. So it's simply a procedure where stitches are used to close the cervix during pregnancy. Like I've always mentioned, the cervix is a junction between the lower part of the womb and the vagina. So the cervix projects into the vagina, very important area in the female body. So the essence of cervical sacrilege is actually to prevent pregnancy loss or premature birth in a woman that has risk factors for incompetent cervix. This can actually be given through two ways. It can be intra-abdominal. So you go through the abdomen, a surgical incision, go into the abdomen, then go to the cervix and apply the stitches. It can be done through the vagina, and if it's done through the vagina, it's called intra-transvaginal sacrilege. But whichever method that is adopted, the most important aim of cervical sacrilege is to help the pregnancy to be carried to the time the baby is going to be due. Normally, the appropriate time to put those stitches is about 12 to 14 weeks. That's the standard for putting these stitches. The idea is to put it about a time that the function will be fully felt. Normally, it's not common to have cervical sacrilege after 24 weeks. But depending on the progress of pregnancy, depending on changes in the, in the cervix any time, in as much as it's only advisable to be given within 12 to 14 weeks, you can have cervical sacrilege any time. Generally, if you're given a cervical sacrilege, the sacrilege is removed around the 37 week of the pregnancy. Every decision regarding when to put sacrilege and when to remove the sacrilege, it's all going to be based on your history of the progress of a pregnancy. Your provider is the person that will make these decisions. Not everyone is a candidate for cervical sacrilege. There are some women that won't be needing cervical sacrilege because of the complications. However, if you've had cervical sacrilege in the past and you had a successful pregnancy, chances are that subsequent pregnancies will be also in line with having cervical sacrilege. So having a previous history of cervical sacrilege is an indication of getting another cervical sacrilege in subsequent pregnancies. So it's very important to understand the benefits to you and the baby. Remember the goal of every pregnancy is to deliver the baby healthy and also to have the woman healthy so the woman can enjoy the fruit of our labor for nine months. Normally, the cervix is closed and rigid before pregnancy. That's the normal state of the cervix. However, during pregnancy, your cervix goes through a couple of changes. It softens, the length of cervix is reduced, and it actually dilates, it opens. These 
changes can only occur naturally in an uncomplicated pregnancy if you are going into labor. Labor is about the last process of pregnancy. Once labor sets in, it means the body is ready for the baby to come. So once you go into labor, there will be a couple of changes in your cervix. It will soften, it will shorten in length, then it will start dilating. But if you have all these changes way before labor comes, the chances you're going to have preterm delivery is very high. So the essence of the cervical cyclage is to prevent this from happening. Normally, if you have weak or incompetent cervix, the method I mentioned will be applicable to you. If you've had previous bad experience in pregnancies and in course of the assessment, we discovered that your cervix was incompetent, likely you're going to get cervical cyclage to ensure you have a very good outcome. So like I've, I've already mentioned, if you had one in the past, you're likely going to have in subsequent pregnancies, matter of fact, it's safer to take that precautionary measure in subsequent pregnancies. A history of one or more second trimester loss. Remember, pregnancies are divided into three different phases, first trimester, second trimester, and third trimester. So if for any reasons you had loss of your pregnancy in second trimester following a painless cervix cervical dilation you have a painless bleeding or cervical dilate, dil, dilation of your cervix and suddenly you lost the, the baby chances are that it was due to weak cervix if you've also had previous cyclage in the past i've already mentioned that or if in course of examining you we discover that the cervix is changing, you, you're already going into dilation when you're, you're not supposed to go. These are things that will make a very strong case for your doctor to give you cervical cyclage. So these are the indications of things you should know. If you've had previous history of spontaneous loss of a baby prior to 34 weeks, which is called preterm delivery, and in course of this current pregnancy, they take an ultrasound and they discover that your cervix is actually shortened. Before 24 weeks, you're likely going to get cervical cyclage, all things being equal. However, there are a couple of things that will discourage cervical cyclage. There are a couple of presentations you will have or signs that might discourage cervical cyclage completely. If you have vaginal bleeding, that's one of the things when it happens, you might not be a good candidate for this. If you're currently experiencing preterm labor already, which is what actually cervical uh, cyclage is kind of trying to make sure it doesn't happen. Or if you have overwhelming intrauterine infections, or if you have what we call premature rupture of your water membranes, when the water ruptures before you're due, when you have any of this, cervical cyclage is not really advisable in this situation. Also, if you're expecting twins, cervical cyclage is not normally given in women that are expecting twins. If for any reasons the baby you're carrying is not compatible with life, if for any reasons the baby has some abnormalities that make the baby not to be compatible with life, cervical cyclage will not be given to you. If also the membranes, the fetal membranes, membranes are like, you know, very soft cover of a baby. If for some reason it's pro prolapsed, if it's showing, you know, going through the cervix, if in course of checking the cervix, you saw some of the baby's membrane, then this will also be an indication that you're not a good candidate for, cerv for cervical cyclage. So to summarize, because pregnancy is very delicate, there are a couple of precautionary measures we we'll normally take because the ultimate aim of our pregnancies is to have the mother and the baby in good condition. So if you've had previous history of cervical incompetence and you had sacrilege in the past, your pregnancy is considered high risk. So you must see a high risk practitioner who will keep an eye on that pregnancy and make sure you don't have repeat loss of your baby. 
so you have to be very conversant with this the type of practitioner you see in course of the antenatal care visit is entirely different from the one someone that doesn't have this history will see okay so please take time and go through the video and understand the concept of cervical sacral is a topic that is very 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 important okay thank you so much and have a good day bye bye